this kid was 18. I didn't even realize that at the time. And then he's like, yeah. So he turned around like he was going to like walk away. And then he punched me. He started punching me. And I started fucking him up. And then eight other people started to come towards me. And um, yeah, they ended up jumping me. <laughs> Dude, if it wasn't for me falling to the floor by myself, like, I don't know what would have happened. Found out a cosign. Most of y'all can't relate what has been in some of my homeboy. We ain't never think alike. I've been out here straight, built like an enterprise. Don't know the name, better ask twice. Been putting work like it's overtime. Yeah, my bad if I don't reply. I'm in the booth cooking, or maybe I got the high to. Yeah, bro, I'm in the booth. What's up? You nervous? Yeah. How long have you been doing this? November 1st. Holy shit, man. Just a couple weeks. <laughs> A month, a month, a month. Good shit. What made you want to start doing podcasts? Because, uh, so I was going through like some depression, all this anxiety and stuff, and yeah. I like kind of figured like the only the only moment I'd be able to like discuss it and like be able to express my feelings is talking to someone. Mm -hmm. So I kind of put and like like you said earlier, someone else maybe had it worse than me. So I was like, hey, someone can tell me their story or something that they've done in the past, something that they felt, and they express it and it makes me feel more like contained, like you know. Yeah, man, I feel like as like people, we all deal with our own different types of demons. Mm -hmm. Even as someone like in the Beverly Hills that had the most luxurious life, the life that we dream of, mm -hmm. but they probably deal with something like maybe their dad's an alcoholic, probably wasn't even there. So, you know, that's their demons. But then there's also people that are way worse that come from the inner city that, you know, probably could even celebrate a Christmas. Um, I do True. bail bonds. I'm not sure if you guys know that. But I asked this lady, I'm like, oh, you guys ready for the holidays? And she just like let it all out. And he's like, you know what? I got my kids taken this year. So I'm just gonna be alone. My piece of shit ex, like, you know, did me dirty, called the cops, and accused me of something I didn't even do, just so he could take my kids. And I just felt overwhelmed with that, dude. I'm just like, That's, fuck. Yeah. Like, I'm sorry I even asked, but, you know, I was happy she was able to at least like let it out on me. Dang. All right, I'll get it. I'm gonna ask you something about that, but let me just intro. Intr yeah, yeah. Do this intro. So what up, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Into Deep. I am your host, Alan Vasquez, and I just want to say Merry Christmas to everybody and um, Happy Holidays, because, I mean. No, we have one more show before New Year's. So, yeah, never mind. We have one more show before New <laughs> Year's, before, uh, yeah, season two and all that stuff. And, again, if you want to be in season two, just let me know. Oh, dude. You I'm, can, I'm I, I can actually put you on with Buddy and your brother. They're all both going to be in the one episode together. Oh, hell yeah. I'm down. So, um, so again, I just want to say uh, thank you to everyone listening to every platform on YouTube, pod, uh, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts. They just put me on and YouTube because um, this is – Pretty cool. Something that's brand new to a lot of people. And a lot of people are using it as a good platform to, you know, expose their own uh, music or share their stories to um, a whole other audience and around the world. So, yeah, we finally hit Peru, which was pretty bad. That's what you're saying, bro. <laughs> I was like, what the fuck? Who's listening to Peru? I'm actually popping in Brazil, bro. So. Hey, that's what's hey, up. Let's go. I fuck with Brazil, bro. <laughs> <laughs> um, and again, please uh, mask up, everybody. COVID right now is spiking, and that's why I haven't been posting a lot of videos on uh, for Lost Tapes and the Ghost Adventures type shit. Um, just please be courteous of others around you and wear your mask or just stay home. Uh, so today we have um, another special guest, a great guest. I'm assuming he uh, will tell his stories, some stories that are have been untold to the public. We have the guest, uh, the brother of my last week's guest, co-founder of Casa Mafioso, the music artist, the man himself, Dela Cruz. What's good, you guys? So what's up, bro? Oh, man. Let me know. Holidays, but, man. You know, it's, it's been a good year for me, but also sucks at the same time. Mm -hmm. um, this was my first year of being a full-time agent, a bail bond, and also main reason why I've been super low-key. But I've just been building, man. Mm -hmm. I've been doing everything like super discreet. Like I just, you know, show you. I just have a music video just ready to be uploaded. I'm just trying to have a lot of things in the vaults, more music yeah. in the vault. So next year is gonna be more of my power moves to show you everything I was building in 2020. And what, um, like what, what kind of like um motivates you for like music wise? Um, the way I see, it, man, is I know like I don't know if it's just the confidence in me, but I mm -hmm. don't think I'm a I'm a bad rapper. So I feel like you know this is the type of talent that most people dream of having. So I'm not trying mm -hmm. to let it go to waste. You know, I have different visuals like that I want to promote. Mm -hmm. Even in the long term, I you know I want to eventually like manage people, you know, even help them out with their own career. But I just want better for myself. You know, I want to show my family oh, that they yeah. they help me out in the long run. So I'm trying to get back to them, mm -hmm. and that's why this year I worked my ass off and I was able to get my mom like a Louis Vuitton bracelet, got my oh, dad some yeah. Jordans that were like 280 bucks. 
got all my brothers a gift this year that they wanted. And they're all, you know, really hate, stoked on. So, you know, I'm just trying to, you know, make my family proud in the end. No, oh, that's dope. And uh, going back to the story you were telling me before I did the intro, um, like, how do you take, when people tell you, like, their stories and stuff, like, how do you take it, like, um, personally? I like, don't take it personal. Or, how should I say it? Does like, it affect you in any way? I mean, I'm, I'm really considerate, man. Um, but mm-hmm. there's just one book I was reading and I would recommend to everybody. It's called The Four Agreements. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. One of the agreements is saying don't take anything personal. So saying if someone, like, blows off on you, don't let it fuck up your own day. You know, just move past it. Because that negativity is going to fuck up your own day and you're going to keep keep, uh, keep that energy on you. And then you're also other people can feel that energy, too. So oh, if definitely. you just, you know, move past it, you like, you know what? He's probably having a bad day. You know, mm-hmm. his wife was probably cheating on him and that's why he's taking that on me. Yeah. And, yeah, so you shouldn't take anything personal, man. It's just the best way of living your life, you know. And if someone wants to bring negative energy on you, just move past it. And being in that field, like, it honestly helps them. Oh, yeah, dude, I deal with the worst of the worst, man. I deal with tweakers. I deal with, like, legit criminals, child molesters, yeah. rapists. And at the end of the day, man, for those type of people, honestly, bro, I make it really hard for them to get out. Yeah. Really, really hard. But And... Uh, <laughs> I was gonna say, that. I was like, like, do you kind of like, I don't know if you want, like, want to say that, like, do you benefit some people, like, help people out? Oh, I do all the time. Because there's actually like some innocent people that get arrested, like, even for like domestic violence. Mm-hmm. And so I'm like, you know what, dude, you're, you're a normal person. You just got caught up in this shitty situation. Like, I'm gonna do the most to help you out. And has there been like a lot of situations where, like, just wrong place, wrong time, when like they, uh, kind of got away with something that shouldn't have? Mm. I mean, what we do, man, we just bail them out so they have a better chance of just fighting the case. Mm-hmm. Um, for, for the most time, man, they have, most of the cases do get dropped, like, for domestic violence. Yeah. And okay. usually it's just the neighbors that call the cops, too. Mm-hmm. Which sucks. So you they just get detained. And shit. Yeah. Oh, that's fucking whack. And, uh, yeah, I shouldn't, I don't know, if you want to go more into that. I was going to keep going. With, oh, no, um, no, let's, let's hop onto the music, bro. Music, yeah. That's just, say, my, yeah. that's just my, all right, get into music. Like during COVID, what what keeps you inspired? That that's my one of my biggest questions for like I've been having a lot of artists on here, mm-hmm. and um, what is what is like that keeps you driven on uh, during like this quarantine? Honestly, man, the way I see it, I'm just building up because mm-hmm. I already knew from the beginning of this year like I'm just gonna be super low key, just build up my catalog, get music videos ready. So this whole year, like it did affect me by like not doing shows. Like I'm pretty sure oh, like definitely. Buddy Roach was saying, yeah. like, those shows were fucking sick, man. They're like popping. And, like, we brought up Eric over here, like, doing the tacos. Like, it was sick. It was a good ass time. Yeah. And that's the only thing that it, it sucks, man. Because I feel to catch people's attention, you got to be more, like, making moves, more doing, like, shows, putting out more music videos. But I just want to be, like, in the shadows this year, especially with COVID. Like, it's kind of hard, man. Mm-hmm. People are going through some shit. They probably don't even give a fuck about, like, you know, if you're feeling good. So, you know, I'd just rather be, like, on the low, just working, building my catalog. So for this year to come out, just drop everything, like, left and right. Because my whole plan is to at least drop two songs a month and then one music video a month. Mm-hmm. And just keep that going consistently. So I'm already going to be filming another music video in two weeks for another song. Mm-hmm. So when I drop this song, I'm already going to have another song or another music video in the works. And then just keep doing that like consistently until December, man. Mm-hmm. It's easier said than done. Yeah. But as long as I have that in the back of my mind, man, like I'm, I'm going to keep trying to push it. Oh, for sure. And what um, when you make a music video, does it ever... Do you ever make it, like, about what the song's about? No. Because I, I was watching time, some, and yeah. I was like, like, some of, I mean, I couldn't really figure out some meanings of the songs. Like, I do mm-hmm. plug, like, a lot of your music. Like, to people I know, I just, like, share it out. Hey, listen to this fool. This actually beats. He's my next, like, my next guest and stuff. And then I'll, they, they'll, like, tell me, too, like, hey, this is a music, like, this music video. Like, what's your, like, motivation to make the music video, so, like, kind of fit the song i way. like to make the visuals look different than what most people do mm-hmm. so there's a one song 120 i actually try to put like a little like story behind it because the song like i'm pretty much just talking about like having a good time with like a girl mm-hmm. but in the video in the video you'll see like it's me um like pretty much fantasizing of being with a different girl and in mm-hmm. the end it's like a deja vu type of thing where i'm actually in front of a girl that's just going off of me it's like you know what i understand like you're not fully here not fully invested like i'm tired of this shit and it's just like being in a toxic relationship, which I've been in a toxic relationship on and yeah. on for, it's done now, bro. But it was like yeah. eight years of just toxicity. So I have a bunch of like songs I'm dropping this year where I'm finally opening up 
all my mm-hmm. music and just being like, you know what, like this is where I'm like this because of my last relationship. But we just move forward. And you tell your story from just like relationships or like friendships, everything? It's everything, Family, man. Family, life. friendships, being a hustler, mm-hmm. not having a weak mentality. Like I like to promote um, self-confidence as much as I can because that's the biggest yeah. thing, man. And mental health is my hugest you know, thing that I like to focus on. Oh, good shit. That's what the podcast is about. <laughs> oh, hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that's why, I, and I was about to ask you, like, what, have you ever had, like, a downfall in your life that um, oh, dude, all led time, you man. to be the person you are today? Um, Well, there's so many things, man. Uh, for one, my parents, they got divorced when I was, like, three years old. So oh, I had shit. to deal with them, like, going back and forth. And my dad wasn't really around. Like, in one of my songs, like, you know, I say my dad was a rolling stone mm-hmm. because he was just... When it was his turn to like pick us up on the weekends, he would just yeah. leave us at my Diaz house, which mm-hmm. is they're my godparents, and just leave us there for the weekend. And then he'll come in on set on Sunday and pick us up. And me and my dad, we didn't have the best relationship growing up. Like I really did hate him until I was like eighteen, and then we just started like talking. He started, you know, actually I confronted him because my dad, he's not a type of person to talk things out. Mm-hmm. So I really had to just you know be the bigger person, like talk to him, like hey, like I don't like this, I don't like that. So I feel like it really formed me as a a human. To just like put my foot down, like, nah, dude, like, you know, just take oh, charge. At what age did you? Um, pretty much at 18, man, because up until 18, I was like the most insecure kid because mm-hmm. I had ADD, I was on like, uh, like Adderall and that type yeah. of medication. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I would just be that super quiet kid in class, always drawing and then always like writing music. And yeah, my insecurity fucked me up where I didn't want to talk to anybody. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't until like after high school when I just started building myself, started reading more books. Like the four agreements was the one that really like changed my life to like help me just be more focused on how I want to be as a human being. Damn. Damn. And what like what what led you to kind of like pop off on your music if oh, you dude. were so like in, like insecure about your shit? Um, well, like, like I said, man, I wasn't like the like starting off. Yeah, I was pretty bad at rapping, but mm-hmm. eventually, like I just started like pushing. I kept watching like Joey Badass, watching like, a bunch of freestyle yeah. videos, and that's just what really like yo, they can do this, I can do this too. But um, the person I was dating at the time, her cousin actually introduced me to this one kid. And he was doing shows for, like, Drummer Boy, uh, King Little G. And, yeah, he pretty much put me on, man. And after that, it just started popping off because I went on tour with EMC Sinatra. And we did shows all the way from San Diego all the way up to Oakland. So you can only imagine the fan base I was getting at the time. Mm-hmm. And, you know, shout out to those people that still, you know, fuck with my music to this day. Still send me their shit. Like, hey, bro, like, what do you think about this song? And, like, it feels good, man. You know, they look up to me and they actually care about my opinion about the music. Well, that's sick. So do, do you think that you have a bigger voice now? Yeah. Like with, mo- like, um, how do I say, like with ra- other rappers who, or other artists who, um, like kind of already established, mm-hmm. do a lot of people like a- still ask for your opinion? Yeah. Or would? Yeah, man. I'm a super honest person. Like I'm not the type of person to throw shade just because I've dealt with people, people like mm-hmm. that. You know, they hate to see you do better than they are. Yeah. And like, if there's someone that has the talent, man, I'll do whatever I can to, like, help them, too. My like, yo, like, hit up this producer. They're really badass. Or, mm. here, here's this person that was giving me shows. Like, this is a um, pretty much like an agent, like a booking yeah. agent. And that's the, you know, after that one guy that introduced me to him, like, I started using mm. him a lot. I started doing shows for, like, Mozzie, Trinidad James. Started, I even did a show with King Little G and opened oh, up for Jabobber. So it was a good ass time, man. Yeah. And, um, like, going... Like kind of the opposite of what you said. What if it's someone like who is not that great? Would you tell him or would you like try to help him out? I'm so nice, bro. I'm really <laughs> too nice. I'll, I'll, ju- I'll just be like, honestly, bro, like maybe you should work on your delivery a little bit more. Or maybe mm. maybe it's just not the beat. Maybe the beat just does not fit your voice. And I'm just super honest with people. But then I don't sugarcoat anything. But it kind of just like I hate being that guy to like. Say, like, oh, you suck? Yeah, don't fucking rap anymore. <laughs> you should fucking quit. <laughs> like, I'm not the person to talk like that. Well, what if you, like, kind of guide him into, like, a different, like, genre? Like, hey, bro, maybe you should do uh, some country music. I don't know. <laughs> Straight. <laughs> oh, no, I'm like, oh, no, 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 no pun intended. Oh, shit. All right, go back. Yeah, I'm just, I've been going there, bro. Fuck that. Every show I do. <laughs> Um, this was actually a question from who? Oh, anonymous. Uh, who were uh, like your idols growing up, like for music? Bro, it's kind of funny. Um, when I was a kid, my dad was dating this, uh, this uh, his pretty much wife, pretty much racist mm-hmm. as a kid. You know, rest in peace. She passed away to cancer, but she was related to Little Rob. 
Mm-hmm. So like growing up, I have the biggest like culture to like Chicano rap, like Little Rob, oh, sick. MB Riders, uh, Mr. Little One, um, Mr. Shadow. And so that's why like I feel like I have like that like side to me. And that's just the way my dad like raised us, like oldies, low riders. But eventually like growing up, like I started like trying to change my style, man, because you know, respect to those artists, but that style's yeah. pretty much dead. For sure, for so, sure. So, you know, what's gonna make you money in the end? It's just like what's trendy now. So I feel like with my style right now, it's a little mixed with like, you know, Chicano rap with like new age rappers. And that's what I try to do, just like keep it real. And I feel like realness mm-hmm. really does speak a lot. Like when you if you're real in your music, man, I feel like you catch more people's attention. And you t- like you rap about life stories, correct? Yeah. Personal. Everything on my music, man, it's just things I've been through. And like with me yeah. having ADD, man, like I can't even think about the shit I've been talking to because I'm just <laughs> on to the next every single time. Yeah, I, I feel you on that. I grew up with that shit too. Oh, yeah. This it was tough. But uh, this is what keeps like this dis- like keeps me distracted from, you know, thinking about other stuff or going through bad shit. Like this is something that calms me down. Every week, once a week, it's fucking chill. But yeah. With um, uh, wh- who are who? Who's like people that you listen to now? Russ. Russ, Russ is oh. like one of my biggest inspirations. I'm not gonna lie, when I, like when I saw you, like I, I felt like you had that appearance. Oh of, shit! Yeah, and I was like, oh, shit, this is pretty sick because I, I kind of fuck with Russ as well, and yeah. I, I fuck with your music. That I oh, like, I'll bump that, that shit in the car. Um, and like listening to that shit, like you guys, like I don't know, <laughs> I've been like finding like this whole new style of like. Singers like from Buddy, from your, your brother, from uh, Jablais, like all you guys have this different style, and that's all the music I listen to now. Yeah. <coughs> oh my bad, bro. It's it's just nicotine, I swear. It's just <coughs> <coughs> I have baby lungs, bro. I'll just get into my own question. Yeah. Man. Um, m- what is like the most valuable lesson you learned? Most valuable lesson I've learned. Um, don't take anything personal, man. Like, that's my biggest thing. That's really been mm-hmm. helping me because there's so many negativity that goes on in this world, especially right now during COVID. Definitely. Where a lot of people are they're dealing with their own shit. So I don't let that phase me, man. I just focus on myself at the end of the day. As mm-hmm. long as I'm doing whatever I can to make me happy, that's the most important thing. Like, even if it's to relationships, if someone wants to fuck up your day because mm-hmm. of the shit they're going through, just kind of push it aside, man. Just realize, you know, they're probably going through a tougher time than you are. For sure, for sure. And what... um. You said that. Did you use that in the uh, like coming up with the rap game? Um, honestly, man, like the knowledge I have now, probably started building up maybe when I was like twenty two. Mm-hmm. So when I was on tour, I was like nine. No, I was I was like twenty. Because actually, uh, on my twenty first birthday, I was actually in Oxnard doing oh, the show. So we ended up getting a hotel, and yeah, bro, it was fucking crazy. Um, <laughs> I was I had uh, MC Sinatra there, and then. After that, we went to uh, like a Holiday Inn and had all the groupies there, like coming mm-hmm. to the, coming to the room. All the other artists pull up, and it got to the point where like security guard had to come knock on the doors, like, "Hey, yo, they want to talk to you in the front." I'm like, "Oh fuck!" I was all God fucked up, damn. dude. I was my 21st birthday, and this lady that was working there, she's like, "You know what? Like, understand? Like, it's your birthday. It's like, you know, just I'm gonna cut you some slack. I'm not gonna charge you anything. Just uh, yeah. you know, keep it down." And I'm like, "Oh, cool." And, like, and she also told me smell like weed, but we're just hitting the wax pen. So I'm like, "Oh, like, yeah. trust me, it's not gonna smell like that the next, the next day." Mm-hmm. Damn. Yeah. What's your greatest show that you ever performed? Or oh, like dude. your favorite, I'd say. My favorite is when I did a show for... Uh, I opened up for King Little G, and then um, uh, Devourer was there, too. That was oh, the first shit. time I ever tried to peach to rock. Mm-hmm. So before I went on, like, Devourer was like, yo, like, you want, you want some of this shit? Because I was just, like, chopping it up with him. He was cool as fuck, bro. Super cool. Super humble guy. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, yo, this shit's bomb. And I actually gave, like, the best performance I ever had. I was, like, reaching out to the crowd. They're trying to, like, pull me in, dude. Like, it was at Ventura Theater, bro. That theater was fucking sick. Bone Thugs Harmony have opened up there, too. It was... It was Damn. It was, it was a sick. good show, and that was the first time I fucked a milf. Yeah. Being... Yeah, she was, like, 34. <laughs> she was, like, 34, had two kids, and I was... I was, like, 20 at the time. Yeah. And they, in, they invited me <laughs> to an after party, too. So we went to Hell some yeah. girl's house, and, yeah, let's... Well, got it down, man. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, what, what was um, damn, what was that question? Someone wrote something. I didn't write it down, but someone wrote it as a joke. No. I hope it was a joke. But by Insta Insta Yemen. Insta- oh, I stay aiming. Yeah, that's my boy. Yeah, he said, "How did you lose your virginity?" <laughs> oh fuck, dude! I think it was roofied. I don't know. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. No, 
Um, <laughs> when I lost my virginity, bro, I think I was like in middle school. Middle school. Oh shit! Yeah, I was like, I think it was like, and in, being insecure, like you said, you had a huge insecurity. Yeah. How, how did that play out? My thing, bro, like back then, like, and I, I'm still kind of like that to this day. Is like I would always just get in relationships, you know, being mm. in. I'm, I'm a relationship type of person, man. Yeah, so definitely. Obviously, just this girl I was with at the time. <laughs> huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that's yeah, just being in a relationship at the time, bro. So obviously, being kids, being horny, you know, my sex drive is fucking crazy. So. <laughs> wow. wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So shout out to her. <laughs> We're, uh, sprouting. Uh, <laughs> you don't know her. <laughs> Huh? No, no, no comment. comment. I don't want to blast. Um, and again, like again with the insecurity for performing, how did that like change you? Like, I, it was scary as fuck, bro. Yeah, so scary. My, I remember my first show. Like, I didn't know what to do, and I have a video somewhere on my phone of my first performance. I was just like walking, like doing this. I don't know what I was doing, <laughs> just rocking back and forth. It was so embarrassing, but everybody liked it, man, because obviously my music spoke for itself. Yeah, it may have not been the best performer then, but like. You know, with time, dude, you just mm-hmm. end up just second nature. Yeah. It just comes, I mean, for some, it comes naturally. Some, like, just you got to hold off and shit. Actually, man, going back to that one question you asked me, when was my per- best performance? Yeah. It was actually on uh, the April 6th show on my birthday. Mm-hmm. Um, I was, that was my first time ever being um, the headliner. Oh, and shit. And, yeah, dude, when I went on, dude, I had, like, everybody around me actually was packed. Super packed. What was that? Yeah. Oh man, let me show you. Let I could have met everybody sooner, bro. Everybody. I could have met everybody. Didn't go it was chaos. Yeah, man. I feel like every- okay. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think the one that was chaos was the one for buddies. Buddies on buddies. Yeah. Chaos? yeah. That, that one, the one they told me. God, but look, look at this. Uh, I think it's. Which one is it? Uh. Oh yeah. That was the first time I ever uh, performed this song. It was unreleased. And do you feel better, like... Do you feel better performing your songs? You can just see that energy there, bro, that I like oh, to yeah. keep bringing. And th- that's another thing. When when you have, like, an unreleased song, is it easier for you to, like, perform that one? Or because it's, like, something nobody expects. Yeah, I feel like it's easier, man, because usually my unreleased music is music that I've recorded, like, recently. Mm-hmm. So, like, I saw that energy when I'm in the booth. I just bring it, you know, live. And it's just easier for me to, to remember something I just recently just did compared to a song that I'm performing that's, like, maybe a year old. Mm-hmm. But... When it comes to my music, bro, it's 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 easy for me to remember. I just can't remember my, my lyrics on the spot, but once I hear the beat and get that first uh, yeah. bar down, I'm like, okay, cool, like, just second nature. So, like, after... Actually, that was my second question. If you <laughs> if you had it, like, down. Like, if you have the... Like, once you hit, like, the... Like, you got the, the music, you got the beat, and then do you just remember all your lyrics after that, or...? Yeah. There's actually one time, too, that uh, I was doing a show up in... Oh, where was I? Oh, I was in West Covina. And it was my first time performing an unreleased song, but it was just a beat because it wasn't recorded yet. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, you know what? Like, let me lock it, knock it down. And I forgot, like, the second verse. So I just started freestyling it, man. But, like, with me, like, I'm a good, like, freestyler, I like to say. So, you know, it was just enough to, like, catch people's attention. Like, oh, shit, that shit was badass. Yeah. What I said during that time, I do not remember. But I just remember seeing people's, like, faces. Like, oh, okay, that shit was pretty tight. Damn. And what, what made you realize that you were, like, Good at rap. Did someone tell you, or did you just say People like? People always hey. tell me, bro. But I remember when I first started, some girl she told me like, "Yo, you suck." And then years go by, dude, and she, I, I started one of my shows, and like, yo, like this is one of my favorite songs, which is "Miss Me." Mm. "Miss Me" is one of my favorite songs, man. She's like, "Yo, this song's badass," and I still remember that, dude. I'm like, I remember when you told me I sucked, and now like, you know, one of my songs is like one of your, your yeah. favorites. They but that's back, just bro. that's why like when people. I try to help people out so much, man. Like, mm-hmm. yo, like, I'm not good at rapping. Even if they don't have potential then, I'm like, dude, just keep trying. Like, you'll surprise yourself. Yeah. If you keep practicing, if you keep practicing your craps, 
at least an hour a day for 10 years, eventually when you hit that 10 year mark, you're going to become a professional. Mm -hmm. And that's just what statistics say. So I've been doing music since I was like 18. So I'm hoping, hopefully sooner, but by the time I'm 28, you know, hopefully like it takes me somewhere where, you know, I want to be. And you're like, what, 24? Yeah, I'm 24 right now, man. Oh, shit. Yeah. So I've only been doing this, what? I'm bad at math. Six years? That was quick. (laughs) I was like, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Sounds right. (laughs) All right, so actually, I'm gonna get to. I have like two more questions, but that's more of the like the very end where you just like you know end it with. Yeah, yeah. Um, so before we get into like the questions that people ask, I would like to GoPro sent me something, so I had to. Oh yeah, yeah. I can plug that shit. All right, guys. Since tomorrow's the last day to get your deal on the GoPro, uh, to get GoPro Hero Nine, use the links in the description. Two hundred dollars off. It will end a one year subscription uh, to GoPro Plus. You'll get everything fifty percent off. Uh, on all products, so go check it out. Thank you, GoPro, for sponsoring this video. And yeah, use GoPro. And yeah, it's sick as GoPro. Yo, bro. GoPro, if you want to holler at me, I'm I'm available for whatever you guys need. <laughs> yeah, do you actually need like a music video recorded on a GoPro? I can do it. Really? Yeah. I'm actually gonna be down for that, man. I want to do some like POV shit where um, <laughs> I, I got it. I got it. <laughs> <laughs> not like that. Not like that. Oh. Not like that. But. Okay. okay. <laughs> I mean, that too, bro, but I mean, for the music videos, you be something else. I mean, I use... Uh, never mind. <laughs> I was like, I, there's personal use. Yeah, for real. I don't only go mountain biking. <laughs> 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 All right, anyways, let's uh, get to the questions. By Gemma Walker, where do you see yourself in five years? In five years? For well, sure. Oh, hell here. yeah. Shout out to Gemma. She's my sister, man. My oh. soul sister. Oh, shoot. Sure, no. Yeah, she mm-hmm. actually... um. When I first started working, bro, she was there and she was like number one agent. Mm-hmm. And then she ended up starting her own business, oh, uh, yeah. Gemma Walker Bail Bond. So, I mean, you guys can still hit me up if someone's in jail, but definitely her. Like, she taught me everything I need to know. Mm-hmm. Dopest person. But, um, yeah, shout out to her. So, uh, in five years, definitely I see myself as a homeowner, doing more shows, having a bigger fan base, and just being more financially stable. And maybe having a kid. I don't know. Yeah. So, but with the right person, bro. I'm not trying to have like ten baby mamas or anything like that. I feel you, bro. I feel you. Don't 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 do that. No, no, don't no. do that. So I'm yeah. good with one. Two. Five years from now, I'm gonna be 29. So yeah, definitely before 30, bro. I definitely see myself owning my own home. Good family, man. Yeah, man. I'm uh, the oldest out of five, so I have four younger brothers. Shoot. I thought Adrian was older. Yeah, no, all brothers. Older. Yeah, yeah all, all no, no boy, no girls. My mom has nothing but bodyguards around her, bro. Shit, and straight she up. Loves it. That's dope. Especially like with. If you see my brothers, bro, bro just, well, I mean, me and Adrian look scarier than all my other brothers. So oh. just having just <laughs> see, having me yeah. and my brother Adrian by my mom, like, she's protecting us, covered yeah. in tattoos, and we just have a look, man. Um, but sure. I've always been the glue of my family. So I'm always this type of person, like, yo, let's do a family night. Let's get a movie. I'm going to cook some food. I'm a huge cook. I'm a huge yeah. foodie, man. I love to cook. And so I would always cook for my family, mm-hmm. get a bottle of wine, get a bottle of alcohol, and just, like, you know, just drink on the side. Mm-hmm. Just spend time yeah, with family. That's really nice. Really nice. And if you... Like, like I said this to your brother, like you guys really carry yourself. Like you're even with just your voice, mm-hmm. you guys really carry yourself really well. Like, like um, head household type people. Oh yeah, man. Which is kind of funny is we get it from our dad. My mom she likes to talk too, but my dad is a social butterfly, man. Mm-hmm. Every time we would go out with him, doesn't matter if it was Costco, Target, Home Depot, he would always run into somebody. And just start talking to him. And remember that kid that they would start talking for like 10 minutes and we're just right there like just fucking bored. Like, oh, let's get the fuck out of here. Damn, looking good. Uh, But um, uh, yeah, and also my dad, he was a a DJ at the time. So he'd be at the quinceanera just like talking to everybody at the weddings. So we get it from my dad just being talkative as fuck, bro. Sometimes I just babble on. I don't know why. I don't know if it's the ADD or just genetics. Uh, That's Yeah, that's just, I mean, you also pick that up like just growing up. Yeah, just see my dad, man. And what's weird is, like I said, like as a kid, I was super insecure, bro. Mm-hmm. Super, super insecure. I would barely even talk to anybody, always be that quiet kid. So I don't even know when I just started talking to everybody. Maybe when I stopped taking my medication, that's when I just started. I think that's the on. best thing to do. I A lot of people are like recommended to do it. I was, but like, fuck that shit. No, that shit puts you in a whole other mood. You have to express what you fucking feel and yeah, all dude. that shit. I would see myself as a zombie because I wouldn't even eat. No, exactly. Like, it puts you so low. Like, you would that's be good like, Yeah, you're just somebody else that fucking, like you said, a zombie. I, I was yeah. about to say fucking something else. What's kind of funny, bro, is that uh, 
I don't know how old I was, but I got to the point where I just started thinking for my own self. I'm like, yo, fuck this. I'm not going to take a pill. Like, I, like people were saying, you? like, dude, I can see a difference in you when you don't take your medication. Yeah. So I started just, like, my mom was like, here, take this. And I was just like, put it in my mouth. Then she walked away, just take it out. And I would, I would sell my pills, bro, at school. <laughs> so I feel bad for anyone who bought a pill for me because 90% of the time it was already already in my mouth. And because... <laughs> Uh, oh shit! <laughs> hey, maybe that's what gave it an extra kick. I don't know. Hey, it's maybe. Hey, but isn't out out of like kind of like an addiction? Yeah, it is, bro. And like, I didn't even realize it. I thought it was just the worst pill. But as I started getting older, people who don't have Adderall or don't have Adderall don't have ADD yeah. ended up loving that medication more than I did. They're like, yo, I get so hyper on it. I'm like, what the fuck? Do you got turned to a zombie on that? Yeah, I think there's like a. Com- it's because like to people who are like low and like depressed, they get. They get um more amped up and shit. And yeah. it's the opposite with us uh, with people who are really like you can just text me, bro. Yeah, I'm just telling them there you go, my bad. I can't answer. No, you're chilling. From your boy Eric Jimenez. Hey. He says, Love you, Della. Buy me wings. When you buy me wings. Shit, we can go to mm, we can go next week. Yeah. Oh, yeah. On my days off. Ooh, fuck it, I have a day off coming. Oh, that's my next day off is gonna be on New Year's Eve. We can make some. Actually, let's make our own. How hey, about that? that's dope. Fuck yeah. And then get the the B dubs. Um, oh, the, the sauces. And you just hey. Actually, funny story about both of the wild wings. I forgot what fight it was. I think it was the Nate Diaz fight. And um, I love MMA by the way, bro. Yeah. Oh, so yeah, um, yeah. it was Nate Diaz and I forgot who else. And um, I ended up getting like a bunch of like um, the uh, popcorn shit from Buffalo Wild Wings. So it was just like in a big box, like mm-hmm. thirty pieces of it. Yeah, yeah. But I got the blazing. Blazing sauce. <laughs> the hottest and, one. And uh, my boy Sylvie over here. Actually, I just squeezed it. They didn't see the bottle. I just squeezed it, and there was a bunch of uh, the popcorn chicken. Yeah. So he comes in, and he just takes a scoop and just eats it. Oh. And then, like, after, like, maybe two minutes or two seconds, he's like, what the fuck is this? He started getting all hot, all red. And, and I thought it was funny at first, but then after, and I realized I was a fucking dick for doing that shit. <laughs> <laughs> so I God. wish he was here so he can remember that. But. That day, too, remember we went to that joke party? We ate the fucking baby. Oh, oh yeah, dude. I love that shit. I don't know why. I love spicy food, man. That's just pfft, since a kid. Nah, Even right now, bro, everything I eat, I put that patty on. Like the weirdest <laughs> shit I probably put that patty on is like a sandwich, like actually like a cold sandwich, yeah. or even Subway, pizza, everything, 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 bro, everything okay. that I can. All right, he had another question. Um, what was one thing you wish you could unsee? <sighs> unsee. Oh. <sighs> Is that the way you meant it? Yeah. Um, that one thing I wish I could unsee. Moment in life. Um. Hmm. Something I wish I could unsee. Um, I don't know about unsee, but one thing I wish I would undo. Um, as a kid, I'd always, you know. I was a black sheep in my family, bro. So I put my family yeah. through so much. Like, I'd always ditch school, always leave school, ended up trying to, like, be a fucking gangster at, at a point in time. I and so I put my mom through so much, bro. Like, <clears throat> oh, one thing I wish I wouldn't see is see my grandma cry. Because uh, one time I ended up getting jumped because I was 14 at the time. And mm. I was walking through this field on my way to go fight somebody because he wanted to fight me. So I'm like, all right, cool. <clears throat> And um, on my way there, some gangsters like stopped me, and they asked me like, "Oh, you this and this and that? You from this and this and that?" I'm like, "Yeah." I'm like, "Well, you want to fight?" <laughs> this kid was 18. I didn't even realize that at the time. And then he's like, "Yeah." So he turned around, like he was gonna like walk away, and then he punched me. He started punching me, and I started fucking him up. And then eight other people started to come towards me, and um, yeah, they ended up jumping me. <laughs> Dude, if it wasn't for me falling to the floor by myself, like I don't know what would have happened, and. Um, yeah, I don't even know how to get into it, bro. But I got a family that's like well connected. They found out who it was. Um, mm-hmm. They're telling me that the youngest one there was 18 and the oldest one there was like 21. So imagine being 14 and getting jumped by 18 and 21 year olds. Yeah. And then seeing my grandma cry, I had like a black eye. But I didn't give a fuck, bro. Like I knew who did it. And then my uncle ended up taking care of it for me. But going to school and then some guy told me, like, damn, bro, you, you have some fucking balls coming back to school the next day and you have a black eye and everything. I'm like, nah, bro, like I'm not a bitch. Like, yeah. That's one thing I can say for myself. I may have been insecure, but one thing, I've never been a bitch. Never mm-hmm. been the type of person to back down from anything. For sure. And, like, 
any challenge you come up to it? Um, or do you pick and choose? What do you mean? What's that? Uh, what do you mean, like a challenge? As in, if someone came up to you and like, hey, let's fucking start something. Like, will you, will you swing first or you wait till he does an action? Um, I would swing first. I would swing first because I've seen so many fights where people are just like, oh, you do something. Oh no, you do something, oh, yeah, and yeah. nothing happens, and then they're just like. Oh, I wish I would have hit him. And I, I'm the I'm not the type of person to go back. It's like, oh, I wish I would have done that. But like, if it was the first attempt, like the first action, yeah, <laughs> look, at, that's a good example, bro. Me not being a bitch. I was walking looking for uh, one of my homies, and this guy, God this white damn. kid, shoulder checked me, and I was like, what the fuck, bro? I'm like, yo, you better not do that, man. I'm the wrong person. And I started walking away, and then like that demon on my shoulder was like, you are that wrong person. And I started going back to him. <laughs> I'm like, what up, bitch? Saying I don't know what the fuck I was saying to him, but yeah, he. Um, I ended up hitting him, dropping him to the floor, and then it took like three, <clears throat> no, it took two security guards to take me out. Fuck. So right when I was going to go for the second hit to the face, he like grabbed my like bicep so I couldn't even swing. So I was like, fuck. <laughs> and then I ended up just being in the drunk tank. With who? Huh? My bad. I got distracted. <laughs> <laughs> who were you drunk Huh? Who were you with? I was with Adrian, Sylvie, and... Who did you get arrested with? Sylvie. Me and my buddy Sylvie, bro. We ended up... <laughs> I was looking for him, and then we ended up meeting up in the drunk tank. Is he like your day one? Yeah, bro. This one, yeah. Yeah. One of my day ones. Well, I would say like me and yeah. him kick it all the time. So he's like a best friend. But, you know, shout out to, you know, Woke Star. Shout out to Ice Damon. Shout out to Buddy Roach. You know, shout out to my primo T. Suave. Like, those yeah. are my day ones. Do anything for them. You know, I wish they were here. I think they might be coming, but I don't do anything for them, man. Love them to death. We all do music together. You know, check them out. Just, you know, Ice Damon. That's his, his, uh, Drop and then I am cash ready. My boy Walkstar, then Buddy Roach. You guys know Buddy Roach, and then my boy T Suave. Shout out to the much love for them. For sure, bro. Sick ass fucking plug. Um, I already asked you inspiration. A lot of people. Uh, my friend from England. He honestly didn't have a question, but he did. Uh, he did ask, "What's your honest peop- honest honest opinion on English and England England people? English and England people. Like, people from England." Um, or people or in England, England are they considered the UK? Yes. Oh, okay. Nike. Bro, I fuck with the UK like heavy. Like, there's this is one guy out there named uh, oh, what's his name? Uh, 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 uh. he's part of the four four hours, bro. Four hours get fucking down. Oh, but there's one other guy. I forgot what his name is. Uh, let me look this up, bro. It's gonna You're bug trying. me. He sings a song called "Ting Done," Ocean Wisdom. There we go. Ocean Wisdom, bro, one mm-hmm. of the hardest UK rappers I've ever heard. But I feel like they're a little bit more proper, bro, compared to like people over here in, in United States. Like, I was born here, bro. I've never been to the United Kingdom, but there's some weird people over here in the United States, bro. I mean, I mean, everywhere. Yeah, everywhere. I've been to England. There's, I'm not gonna lie. There's, uh, I couldn't understand when I was asking to go to the bathroom, like, well, where with the, the bathroom? They're just telling me like all these different directions. I was like, bro, I'm not from here. He's like, well, <laughs> I feel like people in England, yeah, bro, they're, they're a little bit more like, um, a little bit more blunt than people over here. They are. Yeah. They are. They're they, super blunt. They don't no care. No filter. Yeah. They don't care. Which is tight, bro. I, I like. No, hell yeah. Them. It's more, it's more real. It's like. <laughs> Better than basically, being a street he, he basically insulted me. Yeah. Like, calling me like an idiot saying like, oh, you don't know where the bathroom is. I was like, dude, I don't. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I guess it's toilet over there. And like, I was like. Oh, uh, yeah. They have their different like yeah. names for shit. It's, 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 it's par- posh, 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 posh. See, I don't know. That's their type of English. Oh, it's not, it's not English. It's like posh. I don't fuck it. All right. Anyways, that was his question. Um, all right, from my friend Samara, she's like, "Have you ever uh, been offered a good opportunity but refused it?" Yeah. And what was it? Um, this guy he wanted me to. It was during the time I was on tour, bro. So um, this guy was, he saw that I was doing. Was like, "Hey, bro, do you want to do a show for me? I want to be your manager, but you're only gonna keep five percent, and I'm gonna keep the rest." Which is really, though, I studied the game so much, bro, where I realized a really good deal is 20%. So I would even I would have even settled for 15% mm-hmm. just because I understand he does most of the legwork. You know, he's the one that's getting connected with everybody. I'm just performing, selling tickets. Yeah. Fine. I get it. But for him to offer me 5%, which is really insulting because I think the tickets at the time were maybe 10 bucks. I sell 20 of them. 200 tickets and then 10% of that is 20 bucks. Mm-hmm. I would have to go all the way up to... I forgot where it was. It was really far. For me to like pay for my own expenses and I, I would only get 20 bucks out of it, I was like, nah, dude. Like, It's a really good opportunity, but I'm not going to put more money than the one I'm getting in the end. So in a way, it was 
It was a good opportunity. Just like the the it was just unfair. The circumstances. Yeah, yeah. the circumstance. Yeah, they were really unfair, man. Oh hell no! Fuck that. <laughs> yeah, and then, uh, and then shout out to Russ, bro. Like, um, <laughs> I watched so much of his interviews where like he helps me like peep the game, and like a lot of mm. people talk shit on Russ, but he knows what the fuck he's doing, bro. So that's why I look up to him. And since then, I'm like, you know what, dude? Like, I'm I know my own worth. I'm not gonna settle for less just because it's gonna give me a foot in the door. Especially signing a contract he wanted me to sign was like, I think it was like two. Three years, and I'm like nah, dude. Like that's some bullshit. And the people he wanted me to open to, they were good people, but they weren't like popping, popping where I would actually benefit. Yeah. Know? So it's better that you. So in a way, you kind of dodge the bullet. Oh yeah, dude. Definitely. definitely. I, yeah. I, I I don't regret it at all at all. <laughs> Damn. And um, so okay, next question. Um, I guess for the Christmas spirit, what's the best gift you ever received? Best gift I ever received, and. After, what's the best gift you ever given? Um, the gift I ever received. Uh, and to who, if you don't mind? <laughs> Shit, what the fuck did I? Socks. <laughs> Maybe socks, bro. <laughs> Maybe socks. I was kind of hoping I was going to get socks this year, but I didn't. So I guess I'll just go by myself. Yeah, I don't even know. If my <laughs> I, was, I was like, "Are my socks even matching like, today?" Like fancy ass socks or something. <laughs> For real, no, I was like, <laughs> "Hey, some Versace socks, bro. Come, come at me." But the best gift I've ever re- given would probably be this year, man. I got my mom a Louis Vuitton bracelet, mm. and then my dad the retro nines. Yeah, oh, yeah. So getting my mom a Louis Vuitton was like a like that's a goal, the man. biggest accomplishment this year, bro. No, seeing definitely. her face, she's like, yeah, she was shocked. No, that's, that's good. Bad. Man. This year was fucking Louis Vuitton. <laughs> um, wh- who is the best person you have ever met? In yes. a way, who's like somebody who kind of like in like influence you the most that you keep them close, but like that you still benefit like not benefit from like you still grow with. To be honest, bro, it would probably be Buddy. That's right. Yeah, because um, when I met him, like yeah, I was getting my name out there, but then once me and him got connected, which has probably been like we grew up with each other, bro. But we would just like say what's up, we're cool with each other, like growing mm-hmm. up. But it wasn't until like maybe like two, three years ago is when he actually reached out to me. He's like, yo, can you come perform at my um my nephew's birthday, Tony's? And then after that, it was just like, yeah, we just came really close, bro. It's one of like my day ones too. Cause he's the one that put me onto like his own like uh, little fan base that he had. Cause he yeah. also does his uh, choreography. So yeah, yeah, obviously yeah. all his all the people that listened to him ended up just latching onto me. He's like, oh shit, like they didn't even know who I was until him promoted me. Then I met Eric, and Eric's fucking chose Spoke, bro. And then I met <laughs> Sylvie, which yeah. I met so many people through Buddy, bro. So shout out to him, man. Um, oh, for him, he's actually, yeah. like, helped me have a more of a voice in Fabric because I was always all around. I went to, I was raised in Escondido, San Marcos, Vista, and Fabric. So yeah. I was just all over the place. But Buddy was more established in Fabric, so just, you know, mm-hmm. helping with my fan base in my, the town I'm living, or used to living. Straight, bro. And dude. Would you um, ever, like, you know, further down the road, would you ever, like, move back? No. Or would you <laughs> just grow from it? Yeah, i just grow from it. Like, I love Fabric, bro. I'm always going to be there. But um, there's just way more than to be in second Fabric, bro. Like, sure. I moved to Jamaica and I didn't realize how crazy it was until um, I was here by myself. Because I live here by myself, bro. Mm-hmm. So I was my first week, I'm like, damn, like, I really moved to a whole city that I barely even know. Don't know anybody out here. That's right. And just grow from it, bro. I work in Vista. So mm-hmm. why would you make that? I don't know. Right. <laughs> but it was just my intuition guiding me over here. Which is really sick because my barber is right down the street from me. He's probably like 10 minutes away. And then um, where I go work out, mm-hmm. um, shout out to Nick Perillo, personal trainer. He's like right down the street from me. So another like 10 minutes. Oh. And then everything's close by. The mall's like five minutes away from me. Walmart's down there. Target's right down the street. Yeah, I'm like the same. <laughs> I'm, yeah. like, I'm like 15 minutes away from me. Oh, shit. You live yeah. in Jamaica? Yeah. What the fuck? Perfect, bro. Yeah. So, yeah. So, <laughs> we'll be doing this every, every fucking weekend. <laughs> yeah, bro. Let me know. I'm down. <laughs> no, fuck it. Uh, all right. I have a couple. I think I have one question. One question for me. But do you have anything else? Like, do you want to say you have any questions for me? You have um, like anything you want to like let out before um, I ask you this last question? Because the last question is mainly... Like what? I'll just tell you. Like, what's your what's the message that you, if the world was watching you right now? What's the message you give out to people who 
you know, who are struggling or people who are like growing just at like same pace as you are, like what's the message you'll tell them if they're all listening right now? I would say be more thankful for the little things. Don't take anything personal. And as much as you can, try to show more love than hate. That's dope. I like how deep that was. <laughs> <laughs> I dead ass like how deep. Because everyone says, like, be yourself. But, like, like, yeah, everyone knows. But something more, you know? Yeah, yeah a little bit more detail. I'm a very detailed person, bro. Yeah, you did, did this. Like, you look really structured with everything. Yeah. I mean, you can fucking keep, like you said, you kept professional, everything. Like, it was so proper, like. I don't know. This well, is it's just, the way I see it, bro, is like, if this is really what you want to do, you got to take everything professional. Even if it's like a, you're barely starting off, bro, so just like, even if it's a little small podcast, I would never feel like I'm too good for that. No, for Which sure. is, even if it's for people starting off, photographers, if they're barely starting off, then hit me up. I was like, hey, mm-hmm. dude, like, yo, can I take some pictures of you? Like, I'll do it for free. I'm like, yo, fuck your brother. Like, let's fucking get it done. But if someone's like trying to charge me, I'm like, ah, uh, I don't know, dude. Like, I wouldn't do that. Yeah. So I'm just here to help out everybody else and... It's me helping them, helping me. In a way. Yeah. Yeah. No, for sure. That's dope. Do you have any more, like, questions for me? Do you have, um, I don't know, comments? <sighs> Let me see. I wasn't even prepared for, for that question, but I would say, bro, like, what's one thing you want to accomplish from this podcast? Be heard. Be heard. By a lot of people. Because of the mental health society, there's nobody that's actually, like, putting it out there. Well, definitely there is, but not a lot of people pay attention to it, like, and again, like I, I kind of subliminally, in a way, didn't mean to, but I put it in like the whole Latino community. That was tight. Because in, I could tell you from in a Mexican household, when you talk about like, hey, I'm going through something right now, I asked, I asked my dad. He straight up told me, go drink a beer, get it over with, you know, like just swipe it under the rug. No one actually talks about their feelings. Yeah. I mentioned this in a podcast before that. When, like, it, you could be, like, a, I don't know, 13-year-old, you're confused. You can't drink a beer. What the fuck? Yeah, yeah. You just, like, oh, go run. I don't know. Like, that's what I used to do. I just fucking ran. I played soccer. So, like, that was my way out. So, th- for this being, like, heard to, like, maybe in, like, jails, like, people so they can, like, you know, consider, like, there's always opportunities, no matter where you are. And this was, like, a, a three-week process that it had to make come true because mm-hmm. it was something that it will help me for other people to to to, expo- to share their story to help other people nice. i was my whole thing was always to help other people to help people in a way where i don't have to be physically because i'm a very and un- i'm not really affectionate type person oh okay so like you. it's really good for me to just like show my love through just my words for people who's like oh shit like let's <laughs> there's hope you know there's always hope Oh no, absolutely man. That's my biggest thing. There's always hope. If like and a lot of people notice that I have like a butterfly everywhere. That's mm-hmm. because the butterfly, if you ever read the the book Pap- Papillon, it's like it's it's um it's a dope ass book. Yeah. But it's um it means never lose hope. And that's what the main meaning of everything is. So you have a butterfly that follows you? Or like this like shows up at a There was a butterfly that landed on me one time. They say butterflies are good luck. Yeah. So like if you ever seen a butterfly on you I guess it's good luck if it's around your car. Yeah. I don't know. Some type of significance from a butterfly. There's, there's a lot. Sometimes I, it depends on the color, too. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, I, mine is blue because it's, like, strong. Oh, shit, I've never seen a blue butterfly. It's crazy, huh? Yeah, that's <laughs> fucking sick, bro. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I really... So, yeah, that's that's my main thing is see it help more people and have it be heard. And that's good, bro. Especially yeah. with you doing this, too. It's going to help you grow as a person, make it easier for you to talk to people. Yeah. I'm, I was just be social, man. I used to be antisocial. Very. Because well, yeah. I, mean, I was just like, I was just known for the guy who can kick a ball into a goal. Like, really well known. I was like, this guy was freaking good. I went fucking pro in Spain. I came back. And I'm like, fuck that. Because shit. Shit, shit ton of money. That's what it yeah. was. So I was like, they're trying to. Uh, actually, yeah. If just anyone from Jis, you're hearing this shit, Jis is a fucking scam. And they'll take your money for everything. Uh, I, anything. 200k they wanted for a contract. Holy shit, dude! Yeah, yeah, they were trying to send my bro- my little brother. He's he's a good soccer player, but they wanted mm-hmm. to send him to Spain, but they were charging him like fifteen thousand for three months. Yeah, that, that was one hundred percent jizz. That's how I was. Oh really? Yeah, I was out there for three months. Huh? I played what? I played some like dope ass games too. Like I played in, in uh, Division Two. Yeah. Hey, shout out to everyone who's there, bro. They they're fucking badass. Yeah. But um. Yeah, the contract was fucking. It was it was insane. It was it was dope as fuck. Yeah. 
five thousand a week. I was like, fuck it, take like you. T- that's yours. Yeah. But for six months, you don't get paid. It was a year contract. Six yeah. months, you don't get paid. They see if you're good or not. Shit. Last six months, if you're good or not, or if they kick you home, they they, they don't return your money. Two hundred k is what you have to put down. Damn, that's fucking crazy. So like anyway. You, you have to either go out there with a lot of money or just make it to Mexico. I think. <laughs> <laughs> Better than you guys. Yeah, bro, like I was saying, I was going to have a Christmas party right here. So I think sick as fuck, bro. Like, he came through. and like, I'm always doing some shit with my friends, bro. Like, after For I got sure. this place, every week, we always just turn up. No, that's dope. Yeah, like so. you said, like, you're like kind of like a family person, so you like to keep everybody close. Oh, yeah, That's bro. dope. Um, play hard. Work harder. That's my hey, whole thing, bro. That's dope. No, fuck with that, bro. And, um... I mean, I don't know. I, have, I don't have any more questions. Do you want to give like a last shout out before I close it off? Um, I just want to say, anyone that's going through some shade, don't be afraid to hit me up. I'm a really open person. I'm a very sincere person. So anyone who's going through some shit during these tough times, definitely, you know, can reach me on my Instagram. Hit me up on Snapchat. Wherever you can find me. If you know people that know me, ask for my social media. I got you guys. Fuck yeah. All right, guys. Well, thank you for listening, watching, viewing, everything on every platform. Check us out. Check out Dela Cruz's. All his media is going to be on the bottom. I fuck with his music. You guys should too. I plug his shit as much as possible. So please just go listen to him. Listen to the podcast. Again, like he said, if you guys need someone to talk to, hit me up. There's a lot, always the hotlines on the bottom of the, in the description. Check it out. You're never alone. And yeah. There we go. Peace. Music coming out. 2021. Oh, Let's shit. Go. Yeah. Let's plug your music, bro. What hey, the fuck? hey. Oh, yeah. Fuck. So, <laughs> yeah, the YouTube is Casa Mafioso. You can also look up Dilak Who's in all caps on YouTube. Easy to find me. SoundCloud, Spotify, Apple Music, all streaming platforms. Get with your boy. IG, D E L V C R U 7. Dilak Cruz. Heard it here first. Let's get it. That's what's up. Everything's going to be in the link description. So, you guys are chilling with that. Make it easier for you guys. And for all of us. So we're good. You're and also, good. bro, I do want to give you oh, special shit. thanks, bro, for having me on this shit. No, what the fuck, dude? It's like me. It's like me asking you, bro. Like, I I, I don't know. I, I always said, I told him in the first episode, I'm like, I'm going to try to get everyone from Faber. Everyone that was from Faber. Hey. I'm like, that's my goal. Like, And kind of, I got a guy. <laughs> I think I got everyone. And now, oh, quick, 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 quick. Next week. Actually, not next week. In like four days. I honestly... I, that's why I kind of wanted Eric here. I want to thank Eric because on on Monday we have a very like a honestly one of the biggest guests we're gonna have, not not by name or oh, by name, by name not by like followers and shit, but by name, he is one of the biggest uh, tour managers in the reggae community. Of uh, he's a tour manager of Ayatera, Juan Love. Uh, send some questions in. And check all that shit out. So I want to thank Eric for hitting this fool up and uh, making this actually possible. And I thank him like with all my life, and I love this fool to death. So yeah, <laughs> that, that's my biggest announcement for Monday. Again, like I said in the beginning of the month, that this was going to be my biggest month. I had Buddy Roach, Stevie De La Cruz, De La Cruz. <laughs> I was like, hey, what's your, bro? I asked him what your first name was, and then he told me. And I was like, nah, no, never mind. <laughs> yeah, for real. <laughs> he, he, was, he was like, dude, that sounds weird. <laughs> I was like, oh, all right, I'll yeah, just yeah, take. Yeah. No one calls yeah. me by my first name yeah. nowadays. Yeah, it's just Della, huh? Yeah, it's just Della. Della, Della Cruz. But yeah, fuck with it. Listen to this podcast. Dope shit, dope content, and I mean, shit that you never heard before. But yeah, and we're all good. Let's go. All right, cool. Dope. Bye.